What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I wanna tell you why front-end engineering, also known as web development, is difficult. Just as difficult, if not even more difficult, than some other parts of programming, like back-end engineering, machine learning, and algorithms and data structures. I've worked on the front-end throughout my entire software engineering career up until now, so I feel pretty well-equipped to talk about this. And what I've done here is I've identified or narrowed it down to four primary things that make front-end development so difficult. So this is what I wanna talk about in this video, and without further ado, let's jump into it. After you smash the like button that's been so delicately made by front-end engineers for you to gently tap, that little thumbs up button. You've tapped it? Okay, let's jump into the first thing. So the first thing that makes front-end development so difficult is the fact that when you're a front-end engineer, you have to know a lot of different languages, so to speak. And I'm putting languages in quotes because they're not exactly all programming languages. So let me explain. First of all, of course, you've got JavaScript. JavaScript is kind of the bread and butter of front ends. So you need to know JavaScript. Then you've got HTML and CSS, of course, which aren't really programming languages, but they are languages nonetheless. You know, they've got unique syntax and rules that you need to know really well to be able to do anything with them. Then on top of that, these days as a front-end developer, you have to know at least one modern-day front-end framework, like React or Angular or Vue. And if you've ever worked with a front-end framework like React, you know that it's basically like learning a new language. You've got new syntax, new rules, new ways of, of writing things and doing things, of accomplishing things that you need to learn. And then on top of that, these front-end frameworks introduce a layer on top of HTML that you have to learn. So if you're working in React, you're going to be working with JSX in your HTML. That's again, another set of rules that you have to know. And then on top of that, these like front-end frameworks tend to be updated every year. Like I remember last year, I had to relearn React not entirely, but a little bit, because there was the brand new React syntax with you know, use state and use effect, which if you're a front-end developer, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, then you know it's just a brand new like revamp of the way that React works. But the point is, there's a lot of stuff to know as a front-end engineer, a lot of syntax, a lot of rules that you have to just learn. The second thing that makes front-end development so difficult is that these days, most products and services are gonna have at least one part of their UI, of their user interface, that is very complex. Whether it be some sort of uh, live feed of events that need to be updated immediately, like for example, if you're on Twitter or on LinkedIn, you have your feed of posts that get updated all the time, or if it's uh, some sort of dashboard that has a ton of entries and a lot of actions that can be performed. So a lot of UIs are gonna be complex, and when a UI is complex, it's naturally more prone to having bugs, it's more prone to having performance issues, like legitimate lag on the UI, it's more prone to having messy code because any front-end engineer who's developed a very complex UI can tell you that when you're, when you're faced with something really complex, you sometimes just kind of throw whatever code makes it work. That code ends up being spaghetti code, which makes it really hard to maintain and to add stuff to it, not good. And then on top of that, complex UIs, UIs that have a lot of stuff going on, often especially need to look good, right? They need to look especially good, rather, because they have so much stuff going on. So you don't want them to be confusing. You want them to be aesthetically pleasing. And that makes them, again, really difficult. And I actually felt this firsthand these last few weeks because I've been developing a feature on AlgoExpert, my company. By the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews or systems design interviews, then do check out my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But so this new feature was a dashboard for recruiters at tech companies who want to have access to very qualified users on AlgoExpert who have unlocked the AlgoExpert certificate. And this dashboard was really complex. Basically, recruiters needed to be able to see 
all of these candidates on algo expert information about them in a table they needed to be able to expand rows in a table to see the information they needed to be able to edit things about candidates you know filter them by skills by you know name or search for them by name filter them by region things like that and that's just really difficult i felt all of these things you know performance issues bugs messy code had to refactor the code making it look really pretty because at first the dashboard just kind of looked okay, but not great. So I had to move a ton of stuff around. You know, I had a lot of help from our other front end engineer on Algo Expert, but point is just a very complicated feature and therefore a difficult time building it. Now, the third thing that makes front end development very difficult is the fact that by nature, most user interfaces are gonna be interacting with some sort of API or backend, meaning that they are gonna have asynchronous interactions where they send a request to an API or backend and then they wait for the response. Now, an asynchronous interaction isn't difficult in and of itself. It's actually fairly straightforward, but it does start to get difficult when you've got multiple API requests that are being issued and waited on, or when you've got a UI that is gonna perform or rather behave differently depending on how different API requests respond in sort of conjunction with one another, right? Sometimes you've got different combinations of UIs or UI behaviors depending on combinations of responses. So for example, Oh, if a user hasn't purchased a product from one API call, but is signed up for the beta of another product from another API call, then you wanna do this. If they're not signed up for the beta, but they're signed up for the alpha, then you wanna do that. If they have purchased the product, then you wanna completely ignore the beta or the alpha. I'm just kind of spitballing here, but you get the idea. You could have a lot of different things that can happen with API requests, and that can be really difficult in your code to handle. Then also, you might have parts of your UI, like for example, a button on a page that depends on an API response. So for example, maybe you're gonna have a button that's disabled based on the response of an API, but the rest of the page, right, everything except the button, doesn't depend on that API call. Well, do you wanna block the entire page from loading just because of that API call that affects the button? Probably not, because that's not gonna be the best you know, user experience. So you're gonna to wanna to make just the button depend on that API call. Well, what does that look like? You know, does the button just not show up? Does the button show up, but with some sort of loading indicator? You know, where do you store the data that the API call responds? Like, do you store it in some sort of, uh, you know, front end state, or is it something that you're not gonna need later on in the UI? Is this a page that gets visited often, right? And you're gonna to wanna to store that in state. Again, point is, a lot of complexity can arise from asynchronicity, and asynchronicity is basically synonymous with front-end development. Now, the fourth and final thing that makes front-end development difficult, and this one is probably my favorite one, it's the one that I think other people take for granted the most or just don't realize the most, so listen carefully, and it's that the difference between a decent UI user interface and a great UI or rather the difference between a great UI and an excellent UI is an insane amount of work. In other words, to go from a great UI to an excellent one, a UI that makes the user think, wow, this is a really good website, and a UI that makes the user think, wow, this is one of the best websites I've ever seen, and I really wanna come back here, and I really enjoy using it, that difference can take a lot of time and effort. There are a lot of diminishing returns in some sense because to go from great to excellent takes so much more time, but the thing is, those diminishing returns are oftentimes still worth it. And so just to give you a couple of examples of you know, what might take a lot of work and might be just really to get that final polish, I'll give you an example that's related to pure styling and then one that's related to JavaScript and asynchronicity. For the styling example, a lot of things on UIs, so like buttons or you know, drop-down menus or whatever, have movements as part of them. You know, either they change colors or they go up and down or left and right. And implementing those things, these changes, is pretty simple. But then if you wanna make them look really nice, 
then you might want to add animations. For example, you might want to add you know, fade in, fade out animations for the colors, or ease in, ease out animations for the movements up and down, left and right. And some of these animations might look really, really nice if they've got a little bit more complexity to them, like uh, a cubic Bezier animation where the thing kind of speeds in and then slows down at the end, right? These animations take a lot of time, and these animations, if done improperly, can add bugs or jank or not be compatible with certain browsers, so very difficult and very time-consuming. Then on the JavaScript or asynchronous side, you've got error handling. It is very, very easy to develop a UI, for example, a form on a page, and to forget to handle a bunch of potential errors that can arise while interacting with that UI. Whether they be you know, validation errors, like the field that you put in or the value that you put in a field is just incorrect, or API errors when you, know, you submit and the API returns some sort of error that you have to handle, or you know, network errors where you don't get a response from an API for whatever reason. And it's very easy to forget about these and to just not handle them and to just say, oh yeah, most users aren't gonna encounter them, except the five or 10% of users who do encounter those errors are gonna have a really, really bad time. And so elegantly handling all of these errors in a way that makes sense, sometimes displaying text to the user, sometimes displaying an entire new user interface flow to the user, all of that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and is very difficult. So that about wraps up the four things that I've identified as the primary difficulties of front-end development. I realize that I've left some things out or briefly hinted at them, like for example, you know, cross-browser compatibility issues or mobile responsiveness. These are also really complicated things about front-end development. But the four things that I mentioned were the most important ones, I think. Let me know what you thought about them in the comments below. I hope that you found them insightful. Do you agree? Do you disagree with them? Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Like I said, that little button that was made by Frontend Engineers for you to tap. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Otherwise, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures, and I will see you in the next video.